Matthew Paris, this is a real treat. I get to interview another Matthew. <laughs> First time in five minutes with history. Okay, I'm gonna put the battery in. Would you be so kind as to count us down from five? Five. Hang on, battery going in, here we are. Five, four, three, two, one. Do you have a favorite composer? For tunes, Guno. For big slushy sounds, Tchaikovsky. I think for, for wonderful moments, uh, uh, Richard Strauss. Do you have a favorite author? Yes. It would be Thornton Wilder, and for one book, The Bridge of San Luis Rey. He's a mid-20th century American novelist. Do you have a favourite film? <laughs> Embarrassing. Uh, Whistle Down the Wind with Hayley Mills. It made a huge impression on me when I was a, a, a kid. How would you describe yourself? Um, a man of modest abilities, all ruthlessly exploited, was what somebody once said to me, I, I think I'm a fairly generous person, but not always kind. I think I'm a bit of a cold fish, and uh, I don't quite know why, and there isn't anything I can do about it. Do you live your life by a particular philosophy? Yeah, I, I do, really, um, w which is that the world has been very good to me, and I intend to be as good as I can uh, to the world. I think the world is a good thing. I think people are good. I think humanity is good. In that sense, I'm a humanist. I'm aware there's plenty of people who would have bitter experience of trying to live by that philosophy, but for me, I've cast my bread upon the waters and it's returned to me. Are you a lover of the outdoors? Yes, absolutely. I, I, I think when I feel that I'm beginning to die, wherever I am, I'm just going to crawl for a door or a window. I always want to be outdoors, always. I, I hate being shut up anywhere. You were brought up in different countries, weren't you? How did that shape you? I had a very strong family, and if you have a strong family, it doesn't... All the rest is backdrop. Fascinating backdrop. I learnt a lot from the backdrop, but it was always backdrop. Foreground was mother, father, brothers, sisters. Would you say your bread and butter now is writing your Times column? Yeah, I have um, two, two Times columns a week, and then I do something for The Spectator, and I have a radio series for Radio 4. How long would it take to write a Times column? Ha, good question. Um, if I have to, it's usually a thousand words. If I have to, I could do it in 40 minutes, even I did one in 35 the other day, but I like to have about six hours. As a columnist, do you feel a responsibility about putting your views and your ideas out into the public domain? No, absolutely none. No, I, I, I just toss something into the into the debate and into the arena. I don't always know if it's right. I, I hope it is. Uh, I, I just like to see what effect it has. I throw a stone into the pond and watch the ripples. I don't agonise. Do you try to be controversial ever, deliberately? Yes, yes. A, a columnist needs to be um, clear and bold and diverting in, in, in what he writes, and I try to be, e even when my thoughts might be rather more nuanced. Do you sometimes look back at something you've written in a column and regret it, wish you hadn't said it? Only things I've said about individuals. I once wrote a column about the second violinist at, at uh, the symphony that I'd been to see and, and his toupee slipping during the pizzicato section. And only afterwards did I realise that he would have realised it was him and that people would have realised it was him. And I felt bitterly remorseful about that. But as for writing stupid things or stupid arguments, I don't care. Do you think that newspapers will survive in hard copy, in print form? No. Uh, they'll see me out, but in, in the long term there, there are now, I think, probably more convenient ways of accessing text. Do you feel freer now as a writer and as a columnist than you did as an MP, as a Conservative Much MP? Much freer. Much, as an MP, you're part of a team. You must be part of a team. You have all sorts of expectations in you. I'm now a completely free agent. I've gone rogue, and there's nothing more pleasant than going rogue and being paid to go rogue. I love it. How do you look back at your time as a Conservative politician? Uh, it, it was a learning process. The main thing was it introduced me to a little part of England, my constituency, uh, from which I've never th since been separated. Because of my upbringing, I've never been a, really attached to a piece of land before. I am now to West Derbyshire, and when I left politics, I never left West Derbyshire. That I loved, the constituency I loved. I wasn't all that brilliant as a, a team player in the House of Commons. Is it fair to say that you don't see your time as a politician and as a television presenter 
as a great success and that perhaps you've now found your calling as a writer? Oh, you put it much too tactfully. I, I failed. I failed spectacularly in television. I led a program uh, to, 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 to disaster. Uh, I failed gradually as a member of parliament. I, I failed in the foreign office. I failed at everything except this. And I love, I love doing this. And that <laughs> is five minutes. I just want to quickly say, how many marathons have you run? I've run about 20 marathons, of which my fastest, I, I became the fastest MP in living memory, two hours and 32 minutes, and I am so proud of that. Matthew Paris, very good to see you. Thanks.